Hey guys, uh, I see a lot of you guys um, posting up about wiring. It's kind of the season to redo stuff in race cars and street cars. And uh, a lot of people are asking questions about where to mount ECUs, how long everything is, ways to make stuff, you know, nicer. So I figured I'd show you guys uh, a couple of the different options from Holly as far as the custom stuff. So none of this is plug and play, but uh, if you've got a oddball location to where you're mounting your ECU or uh, you you know if you got a relay panel that you don't need you know built-in relays that come from Holly uh, if you just want to put in a firewall bulkhead if you want you know to make a custom wiring harness um, these are the options that you got for unterminated so the first one is the one that's been around for the longest this is the standard unterminated harness um, this is, uh, I've been using these for a long time. They work great. Uh, I wind up um, pulling, you know, relays, the relays and fuses out of them because I wind up, you know, usually having a relay board to trigger some of this stuff. Um, so the part number on this one, 558105. Uh, this is actually what I have plugged into the car right now to kind of just show you why this, this is a good option, but this may not be the right option for you. Uh, this one is what they call the flying lead. So, um, part number is right there. Sorry. Part number is five, five, eight, one, two, six. Um, so this is what they call the flying lead harness. So the two key differences here is the unterminated is a couple more bucks, but it comes with all of the connectors, right? So wideband TPS, um, your coil connectors, map ignition, uh, you know, for your ignition adapter. Um, if you've got, you know, stuff, if you're like me, um, you have a ton of connectors. Uh, almost all of that stuff is, you know, connectors or it's all wiring related. But I usually have a huge pile of these that I don't ever use. So if you, uh, if you don't have a stockpile of connectors, this kit is pretty good uh it works really well something i'm going to show you this is on my own car um so the relay is you know already in the harness as you can see this isn't you know for for my application this isn't good because i don't need this relay um i'm running a mechanical fuel pump but i'm also if i had an electric fuel pump i would be triggering it off of uh the smart wire down here but uh but this is good for 99% of, you know, the people out there that are doing a custom wiring job. There's already a fuse built into it. Um, and then you've got your CAN bus plug is already terminated. And then it's about 20 foot long. So you can put this thing wherever you want. This car uh, will have a, a firewall bulkhead. Kind of hard to see, but there it is. A little dusty. Um... So there's no point in me buying a terminated harness to cut it up. You wind up spending more money and then a lot more time actually uh, to, to cut apart a terminated harness instead of just building one from scratch. So another couple reasons for, you know, running in a, uh, an unterminated harness uh, is you, you may have stuff mounted in oddball spots. So like this is my coolant temp. And it's way out front. A terminated harness wouldn't reach. You wind up cutting it up and uh, not working. You know, not it, it doesn't flow right. You know what I mean? So you don't want butt connectors all throughout your harness. Uh, the other thing with uh, with my personal car is I'm trying not to show you too much because there's some stuff in here I don't really want anybody else to see. Um, the like the, this the remote mount um, sensor block. This will have a whole bunch of sensors that a terminated harness would have populated, you know, way out front of the engine when here we are on the firewall. So the unterminated harness is kind of key for this. Uh, if you've got this stuff remote mounted, which I honestly suggest uh, heavily, um, this little Holly piece is sweet. They're like 40 bucks um, and they work really well. So if you've got an oddball scenario like this, um, or maybe you've got, you know, some 
like this right here, this is a, a crank and a crank trigger and then a cam sink. So instead of having to run an ignition adapter harness, we can just run a <clears throat> straight shot of shielded cable. Pardon my mess. Um, but a straight shot of shielded cable right here for cam and crank so there's no brakes in it. Uh, it comes out a lot cleaner. So that's kind of the reasons for unterminated harnesses. The I'm going to show you the, the difference between the two, right? So the flying lead, which is here, and the unterminated harness, which is here. As you can see, you get all the connectors with the unterminated. You don't get the connectors with the flying lead. The flying lead, I actually, I prefer the flying lead um, just because of how I wire cars. Uh, I, I'm, I was actually really happy that they came out with this. And the fact... Uh, Something that was kind of big for me is the can wiring right here is all the way to the length of the end of the flying lead harness. So it's nice if you wanted to try to tidy some stuff up where the can wiring on the unterminated ends, you know, pretty close to the ECU, just like your normal uh, terminated harnesses. So here's the unterminated kit. I think these go for somewhere about $400. Flying lead, I can't remember, I just bought this one. I think it was like $330 or something like that. Uh, just look up the part number, it's right there. And then last but not least, if you are uh, ballsy and want to build one yourself or you've got a stockpile of wire, uh, kind of like I do, I've got a whole bunch of it uh, pretty much everywhere. Um, so if you do have a stockpile of wire and you want to build your own harness, then you get into this. So this is the J1A and J1B connectors and pin kit. So this, the, all this is, is the two connectors for your main harness, right? Which is right here. And then the appropriate size pins, right? So the majority of them are 20 to 22 gauge. And then you have a few 16, 18 gauge. And then you have some weather seal plugs to go into the back of the uh, Tyco connectors. So with this said, if you wire a bunch of cars, uh, like I do, these are sweet because you don't waste anything and you're, you wind up saving money, um, but you do not save time. So the other thing that I wanted to bring up with this is that when you do build your own harness. Um, one of the most important things to remember is that not all crimpers are created equal. So this one, um, Holly sells them. They are the crimpers for the terminals for the ECU. So I will, I will say that you can pull off using a Metropack style connector crimper. Um, but nine chances out of 10, you're going to get impatient and you're going to screw it up. Uh, I, you know, I, hate, I hate to say it. I'm not trying to downplay anybody else's abilities. And I'm sure there's plenty of guys out there that have used it and have done great with it. Um, the issue is, is that it's just not rounded the way it's supposed to be. Uh, you know, it doesn't make the crimp the way it's supposed to be. So as you can see, the jaws are a little bit different here for the holly, um, for the holly pins. Sorry about the noise. It sounds like my girlfriend's home. The, uh, so you've got, what you've got is, uh, is two different types of crimpers, Metropack and then the ECU pins. And then you've got, um, you know, you've got like loose pins and connectors for the, uh, the, the, the plugs that go into the ECU. So if you're going to get into this, plan on getting into this more than once because you'll have a investment, um, in the crimpers, but you know, if you, you get good at this, you wind up doing it for everybody else because it seems as if everybody is scared to death of wiring. So hopefully that kind of explains some stuff and uh, helped y'all out. See you.